though it follows many of the core beats of the original story, the Death on the Nile film greatly expands upon the character of Hercule Poirot, exploring his motivations, ego, and flaws. It also develops his backstory in a way Agatha Christie never did, explaining the origins of his iconic mustache and giving him a romantic past that was never part of his literary incarnation. Death on the Nile tells a complex story of love, murder, and failure. Let's start at the beginning and make our way through the film, examining every key plot point along the way. Might kill them. Spoilers ahead. Poirot is very empathetic towards Jacqueline's love for Simon. He too had fallen deeply in love with a girl named Catherine, who had accepted him with his war scars. The grief of her untimely demise led Poirot to become a detective. The crime is murder. Shit. While Jacqueline is the most obvious suspect for the murder, she has a strong alibi. I did not trust her. I still don't. Poirot knows that Lynette trusted no one on the boat, hence, making everyone a suspect. Her servant, Louise, has been particularly suspicious since she discovered the body. However, this suspicion does not last long as her throat slit corpse is found on the steamer. What did you do last night? You accused me of murder. While putting the pieces of the mystery together, Poirot exposes several passengers. Miss Bowers is not a servant, but a friend of Miss Van Schuyler, who was stripped of her wealth by the Ridgeways. Andrew Kachadourian has consistently urged Lynette to sign some questionable documents. He has also attempted to kill Lynette and Simon by pushing a boulder down on them, but in vain. Lousy Burgett was bribed to stay put as she had seen the killer. Bauk has stolen Lynette's precious necklace on seeing her corpse. Unfortunately, when Monsieur Bauk is about to expose the murderer to Poirot, he gets shot. Pistol. You Unable to fathom the loss of his friend and his failure to prevent the murders, Poirot confronts all the passengers. He confirms that Simon Doyle is the one who killed Lynette and has always seen her as a golden goose for his materialist needs. He accuses everyone of murder. It is a problem, I admit. His one true love, Jacqueline de Bellefort, is devoted to him to the extent that she becomes the mastermind of their crime. He's big and square and boyish and beautifully simple. To quiet the witnesses, she killed Louise and Bauk. Having been exposed by Poirot, Jacqueline takes a gun and shoots Simon and herself. Finally, she finally executes the romantic ending she had always wished to have with Simon. Do you really mean that? Lynette always knew that Jacqueline was her only friend who was never after her money. Nonetheless, what makes her more dangerous than the others is her being blindsided by fanatic love, a trait that Poirot observes when he sees her at the nightclub. Is one of you. Without Jacqueline's genius and devotedness, Simon could never have been able to execute a crime this brilliant that even left Poirot helpless. She knew that the materialistic and weak-hearted Simon could never live through the consequences of his crime. Hence, she liberated him from it. Find who did this. Despite being extremely rich, Lynette Ridgway has always been distressed and insecure as long as she has lived. Though she flaunted her wealth on the surface, she feels guilty for stealing people's happiness. We have the Karnak all to ourselves, a chef and enough champagne to fill the Nile. She disapproves of Rosalie's race, is unsupportive of Louise's personal pleasures, lives off Ms. Bauer's family wealth, and steals the fiancé of her best friend. Have it. Like many cases Poirot comes across, in this case, the victim's death is a result of their karma. It's everyone of murder. It is a problem, I admit. After solving the case of the death on the Nile, Poirot uses his late friend Bauk's advice to take a break from solving cases and live his life. The film ends with Poirot sitting at Salome Otterborn's music show three months later, without his mustache, revealing his war scar. In the modern adaptation of any classic, a few tweaks in the plot for the purpose of making the film palatable can always be appreciated. However, in Death on the Nile, the makers clearly went overboard with that. The film tries to accommodate a long story with some extra additions in two hours. I don't feel safe here. I don't feel safe with any of them. Hence, it is abruptly fast-paced, refusing the audience to savor the story or do their share of the sleuthing. The film has too many edits that prohibit it from achieving the appreciation it could have. Nonetheless, what fails to disappoint is Kenneth Branagh's spot on Poirot impersonation and the excellent performances by every actor. He could reveal Jacqueline de Belfort. These factors qualify the film as a decent one-time watch. Investigated many crimes.